Once upon a time, a galactic republic united tens of thousands of stars. This is democracy. Once upon a time, an interstellar senate reigned over millennia of peace and tranquility. And what did they love? Democracy. Until the disillusion wars destroyed the star lanes and high economy. It was a time where each planet found itself isolated and alone. But it shall carry on the struggle. <laughs> God damn it. It was a time where chaos and anarchy ripped apart civilization. And we all became short and stubby like dwarves. Now, new leaders are rising. Eager for conquest. Eager to reunite, reunite humanity. I like how my voice changed between three different people there. That was great. G'day mates and welcome to Shadow Empire. I get a lot of emails from people telling me to play this game or, you know, try this out. Here's a key. But one of my favorite ones is whenever I get emails from Slytherin, who are the guys who do some really cool and generally weird strategy games. The sort you normally wouldn't find uh, put out by other publishers. One of the best by far and away was Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, and you should go play that game right now. It's amazing. But then there's things like Shadow Empire. And have you ever heard of Aurora 4X? I'm actually planning on doing a game of that right now. But Aurora 4X is completely insane. Much like a book in a Lovecraft story, if you open Aurora 4X, you may go insane. Shadow Empire seems to be something similar. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. It is amazingly weird. I have no idea whether I like it or not yet, because I need to play more of it to tell you if it's worth your time. So join me. Let's get stuck in, but if you didn't catch the premise, it's essentially the same as, say, Stars Without Number. There used to be a great galactic empire, and now there isn't, because someone dropped all the hyper lanes and the ships exploded. We have a choice between map size and world type. You can go for unclassified, you can go for desert, uh, not quite desert, ice, uh, lava. No thank you, I already live in Australia. Siwa and Medusa, which is as close to, uh, Earth as you can get, basically. And then there's just moons. We then get to choose all of the setups. So I'm going to put detailed planet generation on. We're going to have crime, corporates, and cults on. We're going to start at tech level 3. Yes, fog of war. Uh, normal development speed. We're only going to have a supreme council. Oof, this is. We'll get into this in a moment. I'm going to go for beginner, just because I literally only play this game for like 30 minutes. We get to decide our planetology. That's right. Deciding where our planet actually is. Let's re-roll. Wow, we're really close now. And let's re-roll here. We're now 2.5 uh, astral units, uh, astronomical units. I can't remember what the actual AU is means. Uh, the day is 28 hours. The tilt is 14. It is 3,500 kilometers across. The average temperature is 27 degrees. This is a very agreeable place. Damn, it gets hot in spring. Hello, Austra Wait, it gets hot in fall? As what the hell is with this planet? Here we go. We get a biosphere. Xenoscum. Top of the evolution live form, a super bacter. It's a land dwelling microbiological herbivore. Its chemistry is. It's. Oh, my god, this is amazing. I'm gonna reroll this just a few times just to see what we get. Archaeo squid. What? It's a giant meat along carnivore. I've rerolled a few times. We've got forests. We've got uh, xenobiological deadly. Uh, insidious human has, I assume it's like the humans breathing the air. Uh, no farming hazard, I think. Yeah. No tissue nutrition. Oh, I guess we can't eat the aliens. Okay. The top evolution life form is a gastro squid. It is a land dwelling, sizable, two meter long carnivore. All right, let's go with this. We've got 98% service economy, 2% mining economy, no agriculture on this planet. Oof, boy. 64 million people and nine populated zones. And then you can see all the history here. Like, satellites are being operated in the system of this planet. The Republican military has housed a sizable uh, part of the sectoral divisions on this planet. That's pretty cool. Sector capital has been moved to this planet. Oh, and then there's the apocalypse. I see. The war reached us in the year 7,996. War consumed all technological uh, technology fell to barbaric levels over a century of warfare and collapse. We were down to 1.5 million people left, of which most of us were farmers. Wow. Restart your agricultural dream in Shadow Empire. You know what this reminds me of already is uh, is Girls Last Tour. We're just, we're fighting another war in the remnants of a war of a war of a war. 
and we're gonna wipe out this whole planet, and then there'll just be two sad girls left, and then I'm gonna cry a lot. When you're trying to survive the apocalypse and the commies storm the planetary senate. We also had a virus that, uh, that, that killed all the commies, I hope. Now we get to play the game. And I'm gonna be real, pretty cool. However, these people scare me. That little red-headed child over there, he scares me. I do not like that child. I mean, I, I actually really like Redshire. What do, we, what do I want to go for? I don't want to go for the basic choice of the Imperium, so uh, let's go for something else instead. Brilliant. All right, let's get underway, shall we? The game has a lot of these pictures, and they always remind me of those games where you have uh, intimate relations with your families. Yeah, you know those games? Of course you know those games, you fucking degenerate. I store the entirety of this country's knowledge in my forehead. Honestly, I just like this guy over here who looks really shocked to be part of the Senate. That man looks like he's about to mind break a girl. That's all I'm gonna say on that topic. Let's go. My first decision is making an ascension speech. The people need to know what I'm gonna do. Uh, it's gonna be hard and merciless, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to gain plus 14, fist. We're also going to open up a military research council in order to destroy the filthy mutants. That's, um, because I've been in one fight in this game so far. It's not recorded. You'll never get to see it. Because all of my guys died to giant fucking robots. Welcome to Shadow Empire. Now, you might notice a few things. First of all, it is indeed a turn-based, tile-based strategy game. Also, I've just noticed this- who- who the fuck are you? I'm actually writing an RPG right now based off of this sort of system. Well, it's actually not an RPG, it's a uh, mega game, rather based on 40k and this sort of style of system with a bunch of people on a planet. But uh, I think we're going to be a little less insane in the generation of our world. You might want me to explain the game. That's the problem is, I can't. And if I love this game, at some point I'll do a proper, like, funny video review on it. Who knows? But I can tell you several things. One, we have a few different armies here. Two, you can look at those armies and see you've got trucks, artillery, buggies... We've got some uh, militia and artillery here, some bikers. And for those of you who loved Hearts of Iron 3, there's an order of battle. Another super important thing in this game is logistics. You need to make sure your logistics are fed. Here we go, we can see like we've got points of logistics moving around. So if your troops aren't getting fed, they can't fight, so on and so forth. You can't move goods around. You, you know, you've got your stockpiles of goods here, but you know, if you, if you don't have food, you can't move food to the troops for them to eat, so on and so forth. I can also just cause a radiation leak, which is bad, really bad, but it gives me fate points. <laughs> so there is basically two types of points that you can see up here. We've got fate points and then political points. Political points are how you sp uh, play these sorts of cards and then the more powerful ones, for instance, these ones like Labor Day and uh, Traveling Teachers get played with fate points. And then you got money. Well, the uh, very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna send out uh, one of our buggies. Here we go. What are you, my God. Okay, there is 2,900 of the, actually no, there's, there's 6,000 of these guys all up. Oh, actually about 7,000 actually. Jesus fucking Christ. They're the free fo- Oh, shit. Before we do anything too crazy, what we'll do this turn is we will construct a little ice mining facility. Here we go. Yeah, we're gonna start getting some more water in. Oh, actually no, we have loads of water. It's, uh, it's food we need to get more of. Okay, food. We're gonna need metal because metal's how you make most of everything. Another thing that really intrigues me is you can build things like railroads, rail stations, and railheads and uh, truck station supply bases, so there's clearly a lot of stuff behind the logistics uh, idea of things. Oh, and also apparently they're maglev. Nice. The best part of the game is that you can just nationalize your assets. Fuck you, civilians, I own the dome now. Pro tip, if you attack with no one, the computer can't possibly know what the odds of winning are. <laughs> ah, you can do ranged attacks, okay. No return fire, okay, so I could do like an artillery bombardment, I see. Okay, let's just do a ranged attack to start off with. Yeah. Wow, this is... this is kind of mean. But, uh, this is technological superiority. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't realize you could just bomb the shit out of the natives and they couldn't respond. That's amazing. I love this game. Okay, and the rest of our guys are gonna move in with a four to one odds on an attack. Let's go. So here we go. Okay, we lost some bikers, we lost some infantry. But so far, things are going okay. We've got some retreats across the board, but we're holding. Yes, the attacker won. There we go. Oof, that was, uh, was a bit, bit, bit rough, but it's fine. Look, we've captured Mapalette, the town of maps. Wait, that's not a good thing anymore, is it? I've not even met anyone else but these strange natives I've started bombing, and yet I've already gotten a message that in another faction, there is dissatisfaction, and I can help start a coup. A fifth column of rebels to rise up. 
What the shit is that? A land-dwelling, sizable, almost one meter long herbivore. It resembles a coral analog. It's living, fighting coral. He who allows the alien to live shares in the crime of its existence. The tactically smart thing to do would be to engage the enemies I'm already fighting, but frankly, fuck that. Wow. Wow, we would lose. Wow, we, we would lose hard. What? Oh my god, we've discovered the automatic rifle. It occurred to us by lengthening the barrels of our rifles, we might substantially increase the muzzle speed. That's not... That's not, that's not what automatic means, sign. Are you sure you should be in charge of military research? Alright, I love this game. I move three steps from my capital and I find a luxury brothel. Quick everyone, we need to build a road straight to the Rose Club. I know it's out in the fucking hills, but fuck it, that's our current job. We found intact Galactic Republic equipment near the goddamn brothel. Not only that, we found jetpacks near the brothel. <laughs> oh, here's something we can note. Because this is a yellow symbol, it's indicating he's not getting his full dose of, uh, of logistics. Ah, here we go, yeah, so he's no longer getting his full supply because logistics has to come over all of this way. So we're gonna have to build something like a truck stop or something over here. In case you were wondering, yes, we are indeed going to build a truck station on the brothel. Okay, unknown culture, minor, minor regime. I, I've got a feeling, just a, just an odd feeling. These guys probably aren't farmers. We're also gonna send Duke Nukem here out to reduce the amount of control the corporation has in this zone. And, uh, the operation did not go well. I, uh, I think Biff shot our boy. Wait, can I just try again? Affirmative. Affirmative. I have just realized something. It says here, the difficulty is 128. I roll a d100 plus 13. I'm not the best at math, okay? But I don't think I can win. The Mystic Temple is sort of fun. They organize many celebrations and parties. We do not believe their leadership actually believes in their hedonistic gods. Their activities are g- Hang on a s- Hang on, what was that word? Trying to not be consumed by Slaanesh. Their activities are good for population happiness and the birth rate. Oh my- I think- I think you can block how many, like, logistics comes down a road. You know, in case, like, a road gets cut off or something. Oh my god, that's amazing. So, um, it turns out that just finding jetpacks is broken as shit. Uh, they deal 188 soft attack with 188 soft defense. 57 hard, 75 hard defense. Can you guess how much a militia does, maybe? Uh, uh, oh, 10 and 20 and 5 and 10. What the fuck? Well, we've eradicated the free folk, which is good. We can now focus on capturing their last resort and going and finding out what the hell happened to my bro- God damn it! I'm sorry, Sanaya Republic, but uh, you're about to find out you don't get to steal my goddamn brothel. They- what? They violated our borders and declared war on us. What? I'm very confused. Am I in the right? Am I like Germany except Poland actually attacked my radio tower? Are you kidding me? This is amazing! So my jetpacks are already amazing, but I decided to send a militant propagandist with them. That's right, a common thug who knows how to preach hate against the enemy. He also knows how to rock out. Oh, this is pretty cool, so I just spent a couple of political points to make a new zone, so I've actually turned the truck stop and the brothel into its own, like, little fucking city. Congratulations, guys, you're now, you're now a city-state. Enjoy. We are entering a crisis of violence. Oh boy. We've received radio contact from Hex 630, a private expedition by some of our people have established control over the special hex. They're requesting we help them hold on to it. O yes, okay. That, what the fuck? How is my country even yes, sir, being Roger run? That, and the game has crashed. I, I questioned it too much. The game crashed so hard it forced me to have a full night's sleep, but now we're back, so there we go. You know, it was already unfair when we had artillery. We're about to get rockets. The encirclement begins. Yes. You fools! I like that our uh, militia propagandist is just rocking out next to our guns here. Oh, and there, there you go, the little veteran sergeant we have as well who's just pointing his pistol alongside the artillery. Good lads. Will we help the rebels take Odessa? I'm getting some men of war red tide flashbacks. No retreat for you, cowards! Remember, they attacked us first. God damn it, we retreated! I was about to- I thought I was about to win! Okay, everyone hold the line! Next turn, we're going back in! I just noticed an issue. 
They're trying to cut off our bloody logistics. Oh god, hang on. Oh no, I've just stalin granted myself. God damn, we've just got 10 sentinels now. Okay. Yo, how you do? How, how good are these guys? All right, if we already have the overpowered jetpacks, what are these? Somehow weaker than jetpacks. That's right. An AI warbot weaker than jetpacks. <laughs> I mean, there's probably like, I don't know, there's probably like extra heart attack or something that they, they get extra, but it's just <laughs> the fact that, the fact that jetpacks are just so... Jesus Christ! Overpowered. Uh, makes me laugh. Okay, what the hell is this? The red rebels have just shown up? Who the hell are you? What are you doing? Please leave me alone. I don't really want to deal with you right now. I'm gonna send a fucking warbot if I have to. I'm starting to see supply come back to the guys, so it looks like we might be doing the right thing. Okay, we're probably gonna stop our full retreat and just pull back up here then. Hold here. We'll see what we can do. Our brothel in Carbon Man has attracted an exotic courtesan from a land far away. Wow. Yeah, sure. Rent her services. Got Easy. She'll, you'll find her among your strategy. What? Gives selected leader a relation boost. Wow. Greetings, Archie. You know what? I know you direct science, but would you like a courtesan? Yeah. There you go. Nice. Wow, he increased by 31 points? Holy shit, he loves me now. Going in. Oh! Oh, the Red Rebels are like actual rebel units from my faction. I see. That makes more sense. Okay. In case you're curious about the tech, by the way, this is the tech tree, which takes us all the way up to plasma rifles and mini shield generators and such, right? Um, I think right now we're in, yeah, we're in engineering and chemistry, rocketry, right? Can actually I do that? I can start designing rocket launches. Right, but that doesn't actually give us... God damn it, it takes all the way up until early orbital to get ICBMs, and we can't even get atomic missiles until later. Aww. Well, if you wanted to see the types of units you can get in this game, you've got the MG, the infantry, the automated MG, the automated turret, you get the Bazooka, Quad MG, Mechanized Quad MG, Artillery, Anti-Tank, Mechanized Artillery, Rocket Launchers, Missile Launchers, I presume that's like kind of what I want. Atomic Launchers, ICBMs, uh, Light Tanks, Medium Tanks, Assault Guns, Mobile Shields, Wide Area Shields, Heavy Tanks, Destroy, a Tank Destroyers, Monitor Tank, what the hell is that? Uh, heavy Walker, Walker, Robotic Infantry, APCs, Jetpack Infantry, and Motorbikes. There's a lot of shit that you can build. And I really want artillery, because I don't have it yet. Man, logistics is weird. Okay, it seems like this place is just consuming all of my logistics, but going around it seems okay. And then it gets to trouble here again. Is it because the militia is eating up all of the logistics? Is that is that's what's happening? Is it... Okay, this is my real big thought here. Is it because the militia is, like, repairing themselves? Is that why they're consuming so much logistics? What if I just started moving the militia all the way back? We swapped them out. And then I'm gonna start- Jesus, that's so fucking loud! I'm gonna start replacing with my other guys. Yeah, it looks like my suspicions were right. Basically, the militia trying to repair themselves, I think, consumed all of the, like, the logistic points. Ooh, we get to design new models of things. I think new model of infantry, maybe? Oh no, these are, like, different designs. Okay, so we can build upon our guard's design or make a brand new design. Let's, like, build upon these guys. Okay, so we get to choose different things. Alright, so we're gonna want to give them an automatic rifle. Okay. We can then give them different types of armor and such. Let's go, yeah, padded enviro suit. Okay. Yeah. Cool, and that means that we'll just get a way better type of infantry unit. Nice. Guards too. Let's compare. 56, 112, 28, 56. Wow, okay, right. So, guards two are just amazingly better. Holy hell. There's a strategy I can play that gives infantry forces plus 40 on the attack and minus 30 on the defense. So what we're gonna do is whack that onto our, uh, yeah, here we go. The first infantry brigade. MG infantry brigade, rather. Oh, I think it stays that way until the time that I can actually change their posture. That's actually quite cool. A little annoying because I don't have enough cards, but cool. I'm not normally a massive fan of card-based games, but it seems pretty well done here. The odds on the attack are not brilliant, okay? I'll even go as far as to say that they're pretty fucking bad. But we have to start attacking, all right? Let's start getting involved. Let's start killing some of them, all right? Oh, wow, we are just losing people left and right. Okay. Wait, we might actually... We, we won this! Holy hell! 
My god, we we actually took the city. Holy hell, we took the city. Oh boy, they're attacking. And the game. God damn it. Damn it. Okay. This looks like a hard crash. I like it. At the same time, if it was stable, if it was stable, that would probably make me play more of it. There's definitely oddities to it. I think it's weird. It's a weird setting for such a game to be built into. Um, like the setting of, oh yeah, it's like, you know, it's this sort of weird thing. Because it really feels like a, it just, a, it's a war simulator is what it is. That's what the core of the game is, is logistics, war, and everything. I do like the fact that you're also worrying about the home front, where you're like, ah oh, shit, gotta keep the people at home happy or else everything goes bad. Um, let's da 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 da. Okay, cool, cool, cool. The card system, uh, take it or leave it. Uh, I, one thing I will pre- uh, sorry, will praise, rather. This system of the decisions, right? It's not like every other game where it's like, oh, I want people to be more democratic, I press the support democracy button, right? Well, obviously, you do choose the support democracy options, but what I'm saying is, like, you only get the choices to be democratic in democratic situations. So, for instance, right now, I'm making a speech. Do I help the Democrats or the bureaucrats or whatever? I can't just press a button in the middle of, you know, random time and be like, hey, please, please give me democracy. Cold icebergs. This is, this is really, this is a much nicer planet, it looks like. Oh my god. So, it, it reminds me of one time, uh, one thing Pyrian once said. Pyrian Flax, if you know him. Uh, he was talking about, I think it was Civilization, how he always wanted one day a game where it was like, he didn't want it to be, you know, where you decided everything, what kind of where you shaped your civilization as it went through the ages. So, you know, if your people wanted a revolution, they had a revolution. It wasn't because you went, hmm, do I want a revolution or a monarchy? And then you clicked one of the buttons, right? You know, it was sort of a thing that was decided long before, and then your people have been pushing for revolution, and then it finally happened sort of thing. This definitely has elements of that. It has elements of pretty much the war games I like, and like a very tile-based war game. And I think definitely it's it's got a really cool system where you're like you're looking after logistics. Logistics is super important in this. Um, I will say I'm not entirely sure on the combat resolution system just because I don't know what it all means. I think as I think simpler combat resolution systems are always going to be better. And I know that sounds a bit weird coming from me because I really like customization. But when I can look at something and be like, see like this, right? When I look at a unit here and I go. Their attack is 40, sorry, their, their soft attack is 47, their defense is 94, like, what does that mean, right? What does that actually mean in my head, right? If I send in two guards, what is the chance that they beat two rebels? Because it really did seem just wacky and wild as to whether people were strong or not. Um, like, I kept getting really, really weak reports. I'm like, oh god, we're gonna lose horrifically to the fucking herbivores. And I don't think herbivores ever killed any of us. So, I don't know, I, I feel like a little bit better of a communication in that sort of thing would be a bit nice. But, um, I know Hearts of Iron 4 had the same thing where uh, it's sort of, you know, you'd end up with what is actually, you know, what, is, what do these numbers actually mean in terms of a combat? Like, it's hard to judge. I, you know, there's, there needs to be more, I guess maybe maybe spies play into this. Maybe spies can tell you about enemy units. I don't know. I tried to use one. I don't know where he went. The game doesn't do it. Does, the game doesn't do a very good job of explaining itself. That is the biggest negative. You will have to learn through playing because this is all of the help. There is a little, like, tip system that pops up as you go, which is nice. But it only pops up as things happen, so I can't be like, shit, I need another leader, how do I get another leader? And I discovered the way you get other leaders is just through cards and stuff, as far as I can see. So, uh, yeah. Um, look, overall, interesting game. Needs to be stable if I'm gonna play any more of it. But, uh, here you go, this is like what a full world map would look like. Oh, Aurora, nice. Um, and yeah, you've got all sorts of crazy shit you can do. Like, I, I like the fact that you've got logistics side. I like the fact that you develop tech as the war goes on and you improve your units and stuff. That's all really cool. Like, oh man, it's good. But, uh, but I think we're going to leave it there for now, lads. Thank you very much all for watching. Until next time, I've been Rumi. And, uh, don't go to Flint. <laughs>